Welcome to the organ printing course. In the last couple of lectures, we have discussed various 3D bioprinting techniques like inkjet based bioprinting technique, extrusion based bioprinting technique. So, in this lecture, we will discuss another type of bioprinting technique that is laser assisted bioprinting or LAB technique. So, this technology is also called lift because here the principle of this technology is laser induced forward transfer so we'll see what are the different components of this of this of a bio, laser assisted bioprinter and how does this technology work so the first let's start with the what are the different components of a laser assisted bioprinting setup so if you can see in this image there are at least four different components of a laser assisted bioprinting techniques like the first is the laser source a laser source is being used here for doing this forward transfer where so first a laser source is used so laser with the help of laser source we are transferring the material from the donor to the collecting so here there is a donor layer so that donor layer consists of a laser transparent this is a, basically this is a ribbon so this ribbon has also three layers the first top layer is the glass layer so the glass layer and it is a transparent layer so that the laser can pass through this transparent layer and then the below that glass we have a energy absorbing layer that is made up of either gold or any other material and then below that energy absorbing layer we have this bio ink so the bio ink is also can be made up either with say it's a cell laden hydrogel sometimes other uh, biomolecules like growth factors adducans and other bioactive factors can also be included or encapsulated within this bio ink material. So bio ink is nothing but a cell laden hydrogel, right? As we have discussed in the earlier in the earlier uh, bioprinting, like extrusion based bioprinting technology also. And then now also this ribbon has to be made all the time fresh before the bioprinting process. Now when this so that now here after this whenever the laser is striking the ribbon passing then it can pass through the gold it can pass through the glass layer that is the transparent layer and hitting the energy absorbing layer or gold layer so that, that gold layer can absorb the energy and then then the bio ink layer is there below below this and then this thing so now in this technology this technology laser assisted bioprinting technique also is a non contact contact based approach because here nowhere this donor layer and the collecting layer or the substrate they are coming in contact with each other never they come in contact with each other neither they come in contact through the materials also so that's why this is a non-contact based approach and this can be there it has some advantage because of this non-contact nature the other important properties of this vibrant is this is a is this is also a nozzle free approach as you can see here there is no nozzles or syringes syringes attached here or involved here so that's why this is a nozzle free approach unlike extrusion based bioprinting or inkjet based bioprinting in both these technologies we have seen that how a nozzle is being used for bioprinting process where we move the material through the nozzle and or extrude the thing in case of extrusion based printing we extrude the material through the nozzle so that the material comes out in the front of filament then you can plot them in ingested by printing also you have seen there is a nozzle as attached to that print tape and then where through the nozzles the droplets are generated right but in this case also the droplets are generated but there is no nozzle involved so it's a nozzle free approach and due to this thing due to the non nozzle free approach and non contact based approach there are advantages we will discuss this in the later discuss later what are the different advantages because of this thing but please remember so this is a the main component of a laser based laser assisted bioprinting setup is the laser the ribbon print ribbon and then the collecting plate and the print ribbon again it consists of the first layer is the glass or transparent layer that is made up of glass energy absorbing layer may be made up of gold and the bio ink layer where the cells can also be involved so the layer of biological material can also be there like cells and hydrogel and then the a substrate or collector slide that is placed on a motorized stage right now this here 
here the moving part is mostly the laser that can move on the top surface of this on the surface of this gold and then it can move so that whenever it moves to the whenever it is hitting the ribbon passing through the glass side and hit the, it can hit the absorbable layer right so this is the whole setup of a laser assisted bioprinting setup now let us see the op operation of this technique as i have already discussed a laser source is used and then that laser is focused that laser is focused on the ribbon or the print ribbon where we have this print ribbon as i have already discussed the print ribbon made up of first layer is the glass layer then below that there is an energy absorbing layer and then below that there is a bio layer now wherever the laser irradiates the on the ribbon irradiates the ribbon it can pass through the transparent glass layer right so and then it can hit the energy absorbing layer so passing through the glass layer it it hits the laser hits the energy absorbing layer and in this case whenever it hits the energy absorbing layer the that layer it absorbs the energy from the laser and it heats up so the, the purpose of this energy absorbing layer is to absorb the laser energy and heating up right so whenever it heats up then what will happen then this as we have discussed in our thermal based extrusion thermal based inkjet printing that whenever there is a a hot surface touching to the bio ink or cellular hydrogel aqueous layer then what will happen a bubble is will be produced right so that's why in this case also your bubbles are produced whenever this laser hitting the energy absorbing layer and energy whenever it is it hits up that time it the air bubble will be produced now whenever there is a air bubble produced within this in between this in this energy absorbing layer and the bio ink layer so it creates a high gas pressure right so the bubble whenever there is a bubble produced that bubble could creates a high gas pressure so due to this high gas pressure what will happen it will propel a droplet of the cell laden bioing or it will dislodge the cell laden bioing from that bioing layer and that droplet will be collected or it will be transferred to the substrate or print bed right so this is the whole operation of this inkjet uh, sorry of this laser assisted bio printing bio printing again i am summarizing the operation where a laser a laser source is used that laser source irradiates the transparent glass layer and then passing through the transparent glass gas layer it hits the energy absorbing layer and whenever it hits the energy absorbing layer it basically the energy absorbing layer it it hits up right the that hits up because of this the got energy that is transferred from the laser to the laser layer now because of this the now when the energy absorbing layer heats up and because it is touching the that aqueous cell laden hydrogel or the bio ink so a bubble will be produced right so the because of this bubbles probably bubbles are produced that bubble that creates a high gas pressure between this layer so because of this high gas pressure a droplet from the cell laden bio ink a droplets will be generated and that droplets will propel so, so it that high pressure gas, gas pressure that propel the droplet from the ribbon to the collecting plate so that means it transfers the droplet from the collect uh, from the donor plate that is the ribbon to the collecting plate and where actually it is getting deposited now whenever i am moving the laser on the top surface of this glass layer it is whenever it is hitting the energy absorber from there a droplet will be generated so if i move to the next spot from there again another droplet will be generated so like this i can as per our design i can move the laser on the glass surface and from different different areas of this ribbon the droplets will be generated and then that will be deposited on the collecting plate so in this process basically this process works on the principle of droplets production so whenever the droplets are produced the, those droplets i can basically pattern on the substrate as per the design as per the design and i can create any kind of pattern or any kind of design that is that is required this technology has got huge advantage because of this as i discussed because of this nozzle free and non contact based approach and also it because of the droplets and because we are using 
lasers so depending upon the laser spot size the droplets can be generated the very fine droplets can be generated even droplets containing single cells can also be generated within this with this process so that is the biggest advantage of this laser assisted bioprinting technique now depending upon the type of laser used or depending upon the setting of the system like this thing different types of there are different types of laser assisted bioprinting setups are there the very first one is the standard laser laser induced forward transfer or whatever we have discussed laser bioprinting setup like the first is laser induced forward transfer as we have discussed with the help of laser we are transferring the material from the ribbon or donor plate to the collecting plate right so that's the so that's process is laser induced forward transfer in this case but in this case a very fine layer of that energy absorbing layer or metal layer is used right so there is some concerns that the laser can actually get or can pass through the metal layer and can hit the also the hydrogel or the biowing layer right so if the laser hits the biowing layer then it can cause damage to the cells right so that is the concern in case of laser is the forward transfer so that concern is addressed in the second technique that is absorbing film assisted laser induced forward transfer or alpha lift alpha lift right in this case the difference is here a thick sacrificial metal layer that is the second that energy absorbing layer so they have that is a thick one thicker than the lift the layer that is used in the in case of laser lift right so a thicker 100 micron almost 100 nanometer sacrificial metal layer is there below the glass layer so that works as acts as a laser transparent layer or that acts as a energy absorbing layer in this case so that is the only difference between alpha lift and lift so please remember that in the case of alpha lift a thicker sacrificial metal layer is used in case of lift lift a less than 100 nanometer energy absorbing layer or metal layer is used right now the next technique is another version is the biological laser printing so this is also called bio lp so it is a modified version of the alpha lift like this first this other technology and here what is being used here a ccd camera is used to focus the laser radiation right so in this case this works on a here the resolution is higher than the other technique here because of this ccd camera is used to focus the laser radiation so that a very fine laser spot can be can be can be created on the glass surface and then that spot can be so the energy absorbing layer that spot of energy absorbing layer can be heated up and then a very fine droplets size of droplets can be droplet can be generated and that can be transferred to the layer so this is the difference between uh, bio lp and the alpha lift now but in this case like lif lift alpha lift or bio lp in all these three techniques a high power laser is involved and because of that there are concerns that this laser if this high power laser can get passed through the metal layer and can, if can it can hit the bio layer if so if the bio layer that comes in contact with the laser then there can be a damage to the cells that because the cells are encapsulated in the bio layer so the cells can get damaged damaged due to this due to this irradiation laser irradiation so that's why there are this another development from this uh, the, this laser assisted bioprinting techniques are the, the matrix assisted pulse laser evaporation direct right so this is also called mapel dw right so here the difference is in this case in this technique a low power laser is used right and that low power laser is either in the uv or near uv length wavelength that is being used in this case right right so one concern of using high power laser that is eliminated here in this technique so we are here they use one generally use low power laser so low power laser is being used and other other difference is the that metal layer that is present in between the glass and the bio wing that is the transparent layer laser transparent layer and the bio wing here 
a biopolymer layer is being used as a absorbing energy absorbing layer instead of metals right so in the other technique as i have seen we have seen that the lift or the alpha lift or bio lp here where metal energy absorbing layers are layer b layer is used but in case of mapl dw a biopolymer based energy absorbing layer is used so the advantage here is whenever because now here one thing is low power energy low power laser is being used so low power laser whenever it is passing through the glass tra transparent glass layer hitting the biopolymer energy absorbing layer so the biopolymer energy absorbing layer that is heated up and then a bubble is created a bubble is formed and that because of the bubble a high pressure gas is created so then the high pressure gas propel the by the propel the bioing or cellular hydrogen that is present below that bipolar energy absorbing bipolar layer and then from there a, a droplet will be droplets will be generated and those droplets will be generated and those droplets can be transferred to the cell so this is the difference between mapel dw and the other other three techniques now there is a, a further development here where the laser guided direct writing is another type of laser assisted by printing where where generally a weakly focused around 800 nanometer laser is being used right? so the difference here in the other technique mostly either uv or near uv laser is used and then also metal layers are metal layers are there by and then metal layer is there in the other three technique in mapel w mapel w energy absorbing bipolar layer is here but here the laser beam is used to move the cells in a liquid suspension so here the working principle is different than the other techniques here mostly the laser per laser beam is used and that laser beam also 800 nanometer laser beam is used and that is used to move the cells in a liquid suspension mostly the cells are there in the cell media and with the help of laser we can move them and then we can print them together we can print them or we can we can combine them so the and we can basically we can pattern the cells with the help of this laser guide di guided direct writing or lgdw another thing another important feature of this thing is in the laser beam is coupled with the hollow optical fibers so through the optical fibers the laser beam being is transferred to the liquid suspension media so here because of this the distance the working distance actually increases from 300 micron because 300 micron to several millimeters so that's an advantage of this lg dw so here so here we have discussed different types of type types of laser assisted bioprinting technique starting with lift lift is the most common one and that is the conventional laser assisted bioprinting where as i have already discussed it has the standard format of this thing like the standard ribbons consisting of glass layer in a absorbing metal layer and the bioink layer but in this case the glass layer is finer in case of alpha lift the glass layer is thicker almost close to 100 nanometer and the advantage is it can block the laser so that it prevents the laser passing to the bioink layer in case of bio lp so slight modified version here we use a ccd camera to focus the laser radiation in case of measure assisted laser matrix assisted pulse laser evaporation direct right or mapel dw here a low power laser is used other other advantage other difference is the here a energy absorbing biopolymer layer is used for transferring energy to the material and in case of lg dw a weakly first focused lg 800 nanometer laser is being used that can move the cells in the liquid suspension and also the optical fiber is used for transferring the laser to the now let us discuss the advantages of this thing as i have already discussed because this process is a non contact based process okay so that's why here the it uh, the post printing cell viability is very good in this case because this is a non contact based method and we are generating droplets so due to the droplets the cells are transferred from one place to another place that's why 
the uh, it has got huge advantage in terms of cell viability because of this non-contact process and also it's a nozzle free approach so that's why also the cell viability is very good one another advantage of this technology because it's a nozzle free approach and as we have discussed in case of inject based bioprinting and extrusion based bioprinting so there are problems of nozzle clogging so that that is also eliminated in this case so the nozzle clogging problem is also eliminated other other than that it is this process high resolution because here the droplets are generated and you can create very fine droplets depending upon the laser spot size and the process we can create very fine droplets even single cell spot droplet can also be possibility so that's why so with single cell basically we can create we can so so in this technology the capability is of printing single cells and that single cells if we can print it that droplets containing single cells then we can create a very fine or fine structure having high resolution structures can be possible another capability of the printing high cell density because if we can also the sorry this is it law for 10 to the power 8 cells per ml also we can use in this technique right so because what you can do the high cell density the cell when we are loading the cell or encapsulating the cells in the hydrogel their high cells high cell number can be loaded within this five wing and that can be coated on the below the energy absorbing layer and then and then whenever there is a and then that can be used as a as in the ribbon and then we can do the bioprinting process other thing is low viscous cell suspension can also be used in this case like one to three hundred mps short second so that is like that kind of low viscous suspension can also be used in this case and another advantage of this technique is the high resolution cell patterning because as i discussed that in this case the cap uh, we can create very fine droplets and then so that we can create the pattern the cells in a on the stage as per our design so multicellular micro environment so basically the we can create a multicellular micro environment very, very well create because of this capability of patterning the cells in a in a high resolution manner so these are the advantage of this this of this laser assisted bioprinting technique but there are certain challenges associated with this technique like the risk of laser exposure as we have discussed that the when the laser is striking the ribbon the passing through the glass hitting the energy absorbing layer or the metal layer so but sometimes if the metal layer is not too thick the the laser can pass through the bionic layer also and if the laser is passed through the bionic so that can expose so that cells can get exposed to the laser and that can cause damage to the cells so and because of that photonic cell damage can happen so the cells can get damaged because of this laser exposure and be due to this that can be a that can be an adverse adverse effect on the cell viability can be an issue issue if there is a laser exposure to the cells the other than this because of use of because of uses of metals as a energy absorbing layer that metallic nanoparticles can be produced due to this laser irradiation so these nanoparticles if whenever this if the nanoparticles are produced towards this bioing site and then the bioing can get contaminated with these metal nanoparticles so that can cause cytotoxicity because these nanoparticles can induce cytotoxicity so that is very true in case of lift and upper lift because in both the case the metal energy absorbing energy absorbing layers uh, layer is used thank you so in this case this this is the concern the metal nanobody can be there other challenge associated with this technique is the scalability now because this technique the droplets are produced right so the when the droplets are produced with these droplets we can create very fine structure we can create with high resolution structure we can create but suppose our interest is to print a centimeter level uh, centimeter size tissue then there is a challenge so with this technique is very difficult to fabricate a tissue with higher dimension like centimeter size tissue can be found other things suppose we want to print multiple tissue at the same time then also the, the scalability is a major issue here in this technique the other challenging part is the because this ribbon the ribbon has to be fabricated all the time 
fresh ribbon has to be just yeah, fabricated so that can be an issue so that ribbon so we have to produce this ribbon all the time so after every year because the ribbon changes after every year so that's why that can be another challenge thing the other than this this kind of system the laser research vibrating system system is a cost costly system because the high cost of the laser systems and also the process is also very expensive so the high cost of the laser system to the high cost of the laser systems and on the other other part of the parts of the by printer this printers are expensive the other thing is the complexity of controlling the laser pulses how do you control the laser pulses and all these things that also can be can be challenging like all other by printing techniques here also there are certain process parameters then that, that we need to optimize and i have i have been saying this for, for different printing techniques that before even if you we start doing any by printing you need to optimize the process parameters and then different process parameters are like some laser related parameters like laser intensity spot size pulse and pulse duration so mostly the pulse laser pulse lasers is used for this in case of laser assisted by printing so the intensity of the laser is an important factor because if your intensity is very high then that can the bowing can get damaged due to this thing if the intensity is too low then the droplets will not be transferred so you need to optimize this laser intensity another thing spot size suppose spot size is the dictates the resolution of the printed printed droplets right so in case if the spot size is very fine we can get very fine spots uh, droplets if the spot size is higher more than we can keep the droplet size will be more laser pulse how so the pulse how per pulse duration like this so how often this laser should be radiated that is so the pulse of the laser that is laser pulse is important and those are the pulse duration how frequently or what is the duration of this thing that is very important other than this the viscosity of the material or viscosity of the hydrogel cell laden hydrogel the bi is very another important factor because if the viscosity is very high then the droplet transfer will not be effective if the viscosity is very low then it will not stay in the under the under the ribbon it will just start dripping by itself so we want a viscosity that is but in this case low to moderate viscous bowing can be very well used surface tension of the bowing is another factor because the surface tension of the bowing that will hold up the bowing together so whenever there is a this laser is on it is there by high pressure ga high pressure gas is created that time only the droplets will be transferred so surface tension is, is another important factor of the bowing cell density as i have already mentioned high cell density definitely can be used so depending upon the application you can choose a particular cell density and and that is like that that is also a process parameters another process parameter is the distance between the ribbon and the collecting stage generally this this two are kept very close to each other so that distance is also fine other what will happen if the distance is more the droplets are jammed and the droplets if they have to pass a air gap before even reaching to the stage so the droplets that distance also you need to optimize and the other thing is the depth of the ribbon how deep how how what is the depth of the ribbon that is important because if you are create a the more depth like the if the binding layer is thicker then also it can cause disturbance in the droplet generation and droplet transfer so that is ribbon depth of the ribbon also you need to optimize now let us the thing next thing is the where exactly this extrusion is sorry this laser assisted bio printing apply big applied so there are various application where this technology is applied the very first is the tissue engineering and we, we have earlier discussed tissue is nothing but where we can create artificial tissues for uh, for repair or regeneration of the diseased or damaged tissue so here in this case tissue this laser assisted bio printing technique has already been demonstrated for fabricating cornea and skin tissues and there are also other tissues also being targeted with this by printing setup in case of cornea the corneal keratocyte cells are encapsulated in a in a hydrogel like alginate and other other hydrogel and then then this process they they are coated in the, the under the rib as a ribbon under the ribbon under the metallic energy absorbing layer and then this process then they 
laser is on the process as i have discussed the laser is on and then the droplets are generated so this corneal specific keratocyte cells those can be actually plotted on a collective on the collecting plate and then definitely we can then a corneal matrix like structure can be generated out of this so this can be used for tissue engineering of this thing other things this a skin this for by fabricating of skin tissue construct also this kind of laser assisted bioprinting technique has been already used now another another application of this technology is to generate in vitro tissue and organ models and we have seen that in our earlier lecture also we have discussed this that if we can create a tissue or organ that is mimicking the native tissue and organ if we can recreate that kind of complexity the micro environment of that particular tissue then that can be used as a model a physical model of that particular tissue and organ and then that kind of model has various applications like for fundamental study as a model for drug screening like drug and toxicity screening and also there are other applications the other other research area is the or application is the cancer model where with the help of with the use of cancer cancer cells we can low encapsulate this cancer cells within the within our within our bio wing or the hydrogel and then then actually using this process with laser assisted bioprinting or laser is induced forward transfer we can get the droplets containing this cancer cells and that can be plotted on the print stage so various types of geometry or various types of microenvironment we can do cancer my micro, cancer micro we can create and then then we can actually work on this different or we can work on different cancer modeling development like like we can work on different types of cancer like breast cancer glioblastoma model esophageal cancer model even different types of other types of cancer model can be created with this types with this kind of process with this kind of bioprinting process and then that can be of use so thank you everyone we come to the end of this lecture we will again meet in the next lecture thank you very much for your listening